second try. Um, welcome back everyone, my name is Ella and this is the second try. Uh, I feel like filming this is really really hard to get it right, to like tell the story properly, but yeah. So, first of all, hello, welcome back. I haven't been here for a while. Uh, we went to the Munich show in Munich and then I dyed my hair and then we went to Poland and my appendix burst. So I had emergency surgery in Poland and then I stayed in the hospital for a week. So we're back now and I'm gonna try and catch up with filming and you know on my Patreon and things like that, content and whatnot. But yes, so the second try of filming this video, I was already talking like for 10 minutes and I was like, nah, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> so um, let's give this another go. Get yourself a cup of tea or coffee or hot chocolate or a snack because this is a rambly type of video. This is my paranormal story. Now, I've never done a paranormal story time video or anything like that. Um, also, a disclaimer, if you don't believe in anything like that, just see this, I suppose, as like a, like a nice little Halloween scary story. I will be removing comments that are rude because I am not here for that but in any case I hope you guys enjoy this paranormal story time and I don't have that many I, I guess it depends like who you're comparing it to I do have a couple of stories but this one is the one that stands out that was like a turning point I guess in my life and so you know it's been 13 years now since this has happened and I feel like that is kind of um, a nice type of like number to finally share this story. Now I do want to be very respectful when I'm telling the story so I'm not going to be naming any names or anything like that. Um, so yeah, so let's get right to it. So uh, this was when I was 12 years old. This was when I was you know, 13 years ago, right? I'm turning 25 this year. And essentially the story begins with my family deciding to buy a home in a village in Bavaria. Now this village in Bavaria had a couple of homes that were really, really old uh, as many, many places are in Germany. And we bought this big family home. So my family moved into this home consisting of my parents, my grandparents, my sister and me. We had the attic, my sister and me had the attic and it was a renovated attic. So my parents decided to renovate this attic and make it into my sister's room, my room, my bedroom. And then we had a guest room up there as well as a bathroom. Then right below us, um, my grandparents lived. So they had their complete house in that. Um, imagine it being like almost like apartments. And uh, then we had my mom and papa, my stepdad, on the ground floor. That's where they lived. And then there was a basement where we had like a community room, let's call it. That's where we had our PlayStation or Wii. Um, and we had like a sofa, da sofa down there and like a couple of storage rooms, right? Like just like a room full of food, like jam, <laughs> things like that, right? Like the bicycle. Um, but yeah, so just so that you uh, kind of get an idea of like this house, basement, ground floor where my mom and papa lived, one floor up, my grandparents, and then the attic, my sister and me. And that was a pretty, pretty large room. Um, I had my bedroom section and then I had it split by like a half wall. And then I had my like living area there where I had my school desk, my computer, and I even had my altar there because I was already practicing um, Wicca at that point. And so I had my altar. So we renovated that house. It was a lovely, lovely home. And we were new in this village and we had pretty much just moved in, just finished renovating when it all began. So my bed was right facing the door, like parallel to the door. So when I slept, I could either face the door or face the wall. And I would always like to tuck myself in and face the wall, opposed to looking at the door. And I started going to bed pretty late, like at one or two. And my mom would always be like, 
don't go too late to sleep you have to go to school next morning you don't want you to be like sleepy and stuff at school right mm, so what started happening was that i would hear footsteps and i would tuck myself in i would face the wall and right before i went to sleep i would hear footsteps and i was like why is my mom checking up on me i mean i get it i'm supposed to go to sleep earlier but like it's a little bit weird that i'm 12 years old turning 13 soon um and that she's still checking up on me and so that kind of was happening every night every night i would tuck myself into bed face the wall and hear footsteps and i'm like this is really weird it felt really weird i was already feeling like a weird sensation where every time I would hear the footsteps, I was just like weird sort of feeling, you know? And so I asked my mom, I was like, hey mom, why do you check up on me? Um, don't you think I'm old enough now that you don't have to check up on me at night? And she's like, well, since we've moved here, I have not once gone up to your room to check on you at night. And I'm like, oh, maybe my maybe my papa, maybe my stepdad. And she's like, no, not him either. No one is going to check on you at night. It's really weird. And mind you, my sister was six years old at this time. So it was definitely not her because I would have recognized her footsteps. These were adult footsteps. Like they're heavy, you know, like you can hear the difference between an adult and a child. And I would just start hearing these footsteps. and. As soon as I asked my mom if it was her, she said no, it was no one from the family, I started being really freaked out. So I would go to sleep and I would really tuck myself in, like I would have like the blanket above my face and everything and it was just my like face and nose poking out so that I could breathe. Um, and I was just, it was really, really freaky at this point already. I would hear the footsteps pretty much as soon as I turned around. And then I started hearing breathing and it was just like like that I could hear breathing I could hear footsteps and I could hear someone breathing and it was like heavy breathing like as if it was like difficult for for this person to breathe and I was like this is really freaky now I started sleeping over a lot at my best friend's place because I was like kind of uncomfortable and my opa started to complain to my mom that he could hear my footsteps at night. And he'd be like, I could tell that she was up all night because I heard her footsteps all night. And my mom was like, she's not even at home. She wasn't even home last night. She was over at her best friend's place sleeping over. I'm not sure what you heard, but it wasn't her. And he's like, well, that's really weird. Maybe it was rats. And I mean, we didn't have rats, <laughs> you know, and they were definitely not rat feet. That there is a big difference, obviously, between human feet and rat feet, right? But he kind of just was like, okay, weird, not sure what's going on here, but okay. And I kept hearing footsteps and breathing. So then the, the night happened. So I wanted to go to bed um, and it was two o'clock. I remember specifically looking at the clock, I had a little digital clock on my nightstand and it read two o'clock exactly. And I was like, okay, this is definitely time to go to sleep. I went to the bathroom to brush my teeth and you know, and then I went back and I saw it was two or three. It's like, okay, two or three. And I specifically remember this. And then I went into bed. I um, put my covers on and everything, cuddled myself up and faced the wall again and I immediately heard footsteps approaching my bed and breathing and I was just my heart was pounding I was like shaking and I was just terrified like terrified right and I remember thinking I'm going to turn around and see what this is and if it's the last thing that I do and so I turn around and there's a man standing there and he has dark hair and an orange t-shirt i'm looking at him and he's there and then suddenly he is gone and like truly it was like a whoosh like he was standing there like this and then 
he kind of moved almost as if he took a step to the side and was gone. And I screamed. And I screamed. <laughs> and I saw him facing me. And then he was gone. And I turned on the light. I saw it was 2.05. And I remember this. I remember that was 2.05. I was like, in hindsight, I was like, there's no way in two minutes that I could have fallen asleep. And so I ran to the door, turned on the light, ran downstairs to my grandma's room and was obviously crying and just, you know, so frightened. And she was like, what's wrong? And, you know, I told her everything and she's like, that must have been a really bad dream. Like, it must have been a really vivid dream. And I'm like, no, 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 there was no way that I was asleep. I was not asleep. This is not like I wasn't asleep. I had two minutes to fall asleep. I never fall asleep that quickly. And so she lets me sleep in her room and I'm just terrified. I'm not, I'm not entering a foot into that room. And for two weeks I sleep in my grandma's room. And then I finally, you know, I'm like, okay, I can't sleep in my grandma's room forever. So I take my stuff downstairs because we had like an office downstairs. And I take up camp in that office because that office had like a pull-out sofa it was kind of like a makeshift guest room and so i sleep there and that night i started having sleep paralysis but i didn't know that it was sleep paralysis at that point i was just i would wake up and i couldn't move and but I remember being like, I'm awake, like I can I can look around, I see the room, but I can't move. I can't get up, you know? Um, and I would hear the breathing and obviously I was terrified. And I tried to wake myself up by just like trying to like shake my head, essentially. And that's, that's how I then did wake up. But as soon as I then did, you know, get out of that paralysis, I would look around and not see anything and at that point I started obviously you know already discussing these things with my mom and my Oma and we were all pretty freaked out but at the same time my mom would always be like no it was just a dream and if you think there is something why don't you cleanse your room why don't you you know maybe maybe that's if there is something maybe he's asking for your help to like move over to the other side like maybe he's stuck in limbo or something like that and i'm like no 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 this is not like he's not asking for help this is not the type of energy that is like oh you know you know like it's not a positive energy that i was experiencing and essentially that sleep paralysis kept happening and then pretty soon after that i don't remember who it was but we had someone from the village visit us and I guess that was the first time visiting us. And she, my mom told me this story because she visited my mom. They went, obviously they, she got invited for coffee or something, right? And she visited us. And then my mom told me this after I came home from school. You won't believe what this lady just told me. She was telling me about the history of this house. And she told me that 50 years ago, there was a man who committed in the attic. He had self. Now at this point I was obviously like a feeling of relief because I remember thinking ha huh, I told you so it wasn't a dream I told you so I actually experienced this and you know my parents we all you know we all believe in like these type of things uh, as a matter of fact my my granddad is a I feel like if he had gone into it, he could have become like a medium because he's very sensitive to the spirit world. And he also would continue to hear the footsteps. I continue to have sleep paralysis. Now, we never actually did anything. I was 12, turning 13. And at 14, we moved. We moved to Naples, Italy. Um, but I continue to have sleep paralysis almost every single night for two years, uh, which was obviously awful. And I would hear the breathing and occasionally even laughter, like really sinister laughter. And that room up there, I would not enter it 
at all anymore um, unless it was daylight and I had to go up there for, you know, getting my clothing to change. Uh, but I slept downstairs for pretty much the last year entirely. I was just incredibly uncomfortable in that room. Um, and I mean, at that point, you know, I was 12. Um, I was practicing Wicca, but at the stage or level of a 12 year old, you know, like my cleansing consisted of waving an incense stick around and being like, be gone spirit, <laughs> you know? Um, so the spirit was not be gone. And then we moved. And we moved to Naples, and I still had sleep paralysis, but very, very light. Like, I was very quick to be able to get myself out of it. And as a matter of fact, I was even able to feel it coming on and waking myself up before I actually fell into sleep paralysis for maybe two more weeks, and then it was gone. And I've never visited the house since. I feel like that might be a good idea one day, but yeah. That is the only really scary paranormal story I have. Something that I'm still kind of working through. Um, I have always been afterwards that kind of scared of the dark, which, you know, I know some people might be like, that's silly, but I guess I'm really big on like protection now and cleansing and things like that and just warding and also working with the house spirits and seeing what has happened in the house you know who who lives here who has resided here what's the history making sure that the spirits that do exist in a given space are comfortable with me moving in because i feel like you know You've been there longer than me. I'm I'm like the guest, right? Um, but yeah, that's my, my paranormal story. So I don't know how good of a video this even is. I've never done like a chit chat video uh, like that, like paranormal story. So I'm probably gonna like edit this and probably slightly hate it because I'm very hypercritical <laughs> of my videos. But I hope that you, you know, enjoyed this paranormal story and yeah so i would actually love to hear and read your paranormal stories if you've got any you can either leave them in the comments or you could also um, email them to me i have my email in the description box uh, but yeah again i hope you enjoyed this video uh, and i can't really say if you like this video and would like to see more because i'm not sure if i would have any more paranormal stories that are really worth retelling this is really the most everything else that i have is like smaller let's say like it's not like full story time um but yeah so that's really it for this video uh, i hope you did enjoy it happy spooky season and see you next time bye, bye.